Welcome to the All Central Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Kirk, and I'm joined today, as usual, with the Brit from Baltimore. I haven't called you that in a while. Brit from Baltimore. <laughs> He's back again. Jonathan Brothero. In the house. It's good to so be good, seen. So good to have you, man. And uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of incredible current events that are taking place around the world and uh, within our own backyard. And last week, you know, you, you know, we, you unpacked a little bit about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of man and uh, talked a little bit of politics, which is always fun in church. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, you, uh, you introduced your sermon last week. Let's talk about politics. And yeah. <laughs> people just started laughing straight yeah, away. They did. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> they did. And then some of you ought to see some of the faces. Like, yeah. oh, oh, not again. <laughs> oh, no. You know? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's a hot topic, obviously, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but but we're not really, I mean, we are talking about politics, but we're not, you know. We're, no. We're yeah. not talking about it in a way that's like, vote this way, or this party's no. evil, or, yeah. the, you know, we're not. No. We didn't do that. No, we come to the stance they're all evil. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but, you, you, well, most yeah. people might be laughing at that right now, because oh, you, you might think that in your heart. Yeah, uh, yeah. But no, we didn't, we didn't talk about, uh, you know, which side to vote on. That's no. for sure. No, it, it's not yeah. to sway or to push people, but yeah. it was you, I mean, I, I kicked it off with, you know, God's kingdom as opposed to, uh, you know, the kingdoms of, of man and the yeah. kingdoms of this world. Yeah. There has been many of them. There will be many of them. And, mm-hmm. um, and then you kind of followed it up by just talking about, you know, I, I think this is the gist of your message. Yeah. You could probably articulate mm-hmm. it better than I can. But you know, what are we under the influence of? Yeah, are we under? Are we are we more influenced by uh, secular culture, mm-hmm. or do we allow ourselves to be influenced by by God's culture, by the Spirit of God, by the Holy That's right. Spirit? Yeah, and 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 you just unpacked. I think what what it what it looks like when you get influenced by culture mm-hmm. as opposed to scripture. Uh, when you get influenced by the world as opposed to Christ thinking. And, yeah. and so you really sort of just, you unpack that in a great way. And, and uh, it just leads into so many questions that we can talk about today. It does. And we, and, and we, you know, we talked a, a little bit about, uh, you know, what, what influences your life. And, and, I, and I put a scale up on, on the screen for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, because I think, I think sometimes, you know, you, you, I do as well, got to take a step back. And just like I said on Sunday, open the curtains of my heart and say, okay, what, what, what am I under the influence of in my life? Because there's moments in your life where, and, 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 and the example of that was when you're around someone that's been intoxicated by alcohol. <laughs> under the influence. Under the influence of it. Um, they don't know they're under the influence of it. And they say things they probably shouldn't say and, and right. do things they probably shouldn't do under the influence. And <laughs> And so there's times where I think we get at times so intoxicated with culture, just like this season of, I call it silly season of um, elections and people pick and choose sides and it gets vitriol and it gets awful. It gets ugly. I've seen families break apart, marriages hurt by it, friendships hurt by it, you know, and it's, and it's silly because at the end of the day, whoever gets in, how's it really going to affect your life? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, are you going to pay more in gas or not more in gas with one? Probably. Are you going to pay more in food? And the other? Are you going to get taxed more here? That, Whatever. But but life's going to continue on. Right. And, and, and it's really not going to affect you, whoever that person is. Right, right. And there's a lot of fear-mongering yeah. I find going on yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, like oh, they're going to take person, things away. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. going to steal your rights or they're going to force you to live this way. Or take your Social Security or, away. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, just, and then when you fact-check them, you go back and, and, and you're like, no, they've never never said that <laughs> <laughs> they actually have never said they're taking our right. social security away or right. whatever yeah and, and also yeah. half the things that yeah. are said it's like actually the president doesn't even really have the power to enact half of those changes no there's too many checks and balances in place that's why they there's a congress that's why there's a senate exactly that's, that's, why, yeah. that, that's yeah. why we have a supreme court that's right you know all of these things um so yeah the, the needle does will shift depending on who's in charge, but it doesn't go mm. wah-pah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what and I mean? Yeah, oh, no, it doesn't for shift sure. 180 yeah. degrees. Yeah. 
Um, and so anyway, people people freak out, like you said. They, they, yeah. they get a bit crazy. And yeah. it's like when you're drunk, you know, when you're un- if you allow yourself to be influenced that yes. heavily, that strongly, that pervasively, then of course your behavior is going that's to right. change as well. So what what are we under the influence of? And so that's kind of the that's kind of the kind of angle I went on Sunday and, and, you know, and, and that's, you know, a good discussion for today as well. Like what, what are we under the influence of? And, and one of, one of the areas that we talked with, I talked about too, is our money. You know, what, what, what area am I, am I under the influence of, of culture Mm -hmm. Uh, or, uh, or under, is that under God? Am I, am I taking the first of what God has blessed me with and, and give it, giving it back to the church and blessing others and all those other things? That's, Mm -hmm. You know that's what God has called us to do, yeah. and 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 I'm doing that as an act of obedience according to God's word. And so, so am I setting that aside, or am I in my thoughts? In my thoughts, man, if I have some left over, I'll give some to the right. to 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 an uh, organization to feed kids. But first and foremost, I'm gonna. I'm going to buy myself this, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And me so, first. so there's, yeah. yeah, there's a me first. So, so, so there's a lot of ways that we could go with that um, today, but, but that's, that's kind of the, you kind of get the gist of it, you know? Yeah. I, I well, the, the kind of overarching question, I guess we can lead in with is, you know, are Christians today more influenced by the values of the world or by the teachings of Christ um, in your experience? That's I, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a broad question. It is a broad question, but, but but generally speaking, but generally speaking, I think we are more under the influence of culture. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, absolutely. It's not yeah. even. I don't even think it's close. To be honest with you, though. Right. Right. You know, when you have when you have a church, most churches that do well, and when I say do well, do well from a from people putting God first with their money. Uh, most churches, you know, you. It, 34 35% 30% is killing it you know so of from, your a, congregation, from a, of the congregation that you're give. that's right and the rest yeah. just maybe give or may may not give right yeah. right yeah yeah so, there's a real like when you you know there's, there's a disconnect wo- there there's a yeah. disconnect mm-hmm. when you look at worldly values as opposed to Christ values yeah. like fi- finances for example yeah. you know the world the world always has a scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, make sure you save up for retirement because you don't know mm-hmm. how long you're going to need it for. And, That's and right. Make sure yep. you have these, and and all of those things are smart to do. And we would have found and it's those. biblical, and it's biblical, yeah. and it's actually right. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just talking about the spirit behind it is yeah. one of scarcity, mm-hmm. as opposed to in the kingdom, the spirit behind it isn't save up in case you run out. That's right. It's it's yeah. save up so that you can be a blessing. That's right. It, it's 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 a generative it's, mindset. It, it says save up, make sure you have something to give to your children and your children's children and and so on and so and to be a continued blessing through generations. It, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. like the church, we want people healthy financially, not so that their own little empires are set up and they're safe and their barns are full and their spirit can rest and know yeah. that they're taken care of. Mm-hmm. Whilst that's a good thing, and of course we want that. For that's not sure. the yeah. end goal. Yeah. End goal in a in a Christian value mm-hmm. is so that you can become a mature person, you can become somebody who's adding to society, adding to community, yeah. benefiting those around you because you have such security. That's right. Um, so it's not for your benefit; it's for the community's it's for benefit. the community's benefit. Yeah, um, or for those and, who are and, lacking. And boy, how how awesome is it when you're able to be a blessing when the Lord speaks to your heart about it, and you're yeah. not, and you don't have a scarcity mindset. Well, but I got to do, I got to pay, you know. Yeah. And and you've done your finances God's way, and you're and you're set up to be a blessing in that in that regard and it's so it's so freeing when the holy spirit speaks to you about something you don't even think about it you just do it yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and it's just like that's just one area of our life it's a big area mm-hmm. um but like you said like most of christians today are so widely they're so influenced by secular society mm-hmm. because if you just take the time of your week how much of your time do you allow do Christians allow themselves to be influenced by secular versus Christ thoughts? And and that was a question too. Right. That Our was time. That, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, your time, exactly. Mm-hmm. So how much of it is spent on social media, on the mm-hmm. news, 
on reading outlets, on being advertised to, researching corporations, like all, all of the world stuff mm -hmm. that we spend just our time on versus how much time do we spend in prayer? Mm -hmm. How much time do we spend in meditation? How much time do we spend in the church? Usually we bulk it all into an hour when yeah. we go to Sunday at yeah. church. Yeah. And then we do well if we get yeah. to a prayer meeting twice a month for another well, hour. Well, it's like, okay, so it's like, it's like me saying, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to correlate this with being healthy spiritually, just like what you just said, Pastor John, and, 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 and versus, versus, uh, healthy from a, um, health, uh, physical standpoint, yeah. right. Our bodies. If I just say, I'm going to eat good once a week right, and the rest, I'm just going to eat pizza and whatever, yeah. whatever I'll, I want, I'll eat whatever, one healthy meal I'll eat one week. healthy meal a week, right. then how healthy am I going to be? I'm not going to be healthy. <laughs> it's the same way with our spiritual walk. Yeah, yeah. Like if I'm going to say I'm going to do this once a week, although you should, and it's good, but it's not going to sustain you. Right, right. For the for the other six days. So, so what do you what do you think of real practical advice then? Because th there's the other side of the ditch where, I, I you know, Christians detach. From mm -hmm. everything, you mm -hmm. know, we're not calling people to become desert monks. No, and you know no. what I mean. Go no. live a monastic lifestyle. Separate yourself from the world. No, um, and but there's like this sort of this this balance of like being in the world but not of the yeah, world. Yeah, well, we're not and, supposed and to run shaped? from it. We're supposed to influence it, right? right. And that, that was at the back end of the message, right. um, which is you know which is important. And I, I totally agree with that. There's nothing. There's nothing in Scripture that tells us that we should not be. Um, listen, Jesus showed us a beautiful picture of that. He was the influencer of all influencers. <laughs> you know, yeah. he was around people who were far from God, and and people who were hurting, and people who were broken, and he surrounded himself with people who were hurting and people who were broken, and and brought them along the journey. You know, and and showed and showed in the middle of that showed the disciples and, and others around him that were following him how to treat people when they're far from God yeah. and when they're hurting and when they're broken. When everybody else wants to wants to stone them, he's he's making that go away right. so that so that restoration can happen. And so I think so I think through throughout our journey with 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 the Lord, and again, I'm not saying that you you have to do this every day of your life, spend hours and hours on end. I'm not saying that. Just have a time with, with the Lord. Have mm. a quiet moment. Shut down the craziness of the day. Mm. Just open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Yeah. You know, open up God's word. If you wanna if you wanna hear the, the word of the Lord for your life, sometimes you have to open up God's word and read, read what's coming out of his mouth yeah. to you. And so so I think I said, so I think it's just setting aside those times. We set aside time for everything else. Yeah, yeah. You we set aside time for Netflix. We set aside time right, for all, right. all the other things that influence us. Yeah. Social media, just like you said. I mean, I I would imagine the average person on social media daily is crazy. Yeah, it is. I would yeah. imagine it's it changes insane. all the time. It but does. It's a crazy yeah, and I, now. it's a crazy number. So, so take half of that time. Right. <laughs> and and just get in God's word or meditate or, you know, yeah. have a time of prayer. Well, I think what you're saying is be intentional about it. Be intentional. It's not going to happen by accident. It's not. We don't do anything else by accident. You don't, Jonathan doesn't become great on accident. Right, right. He's going to read books, how to yeah, become yeah. great. He's going to, he's going to study how to become great in the craft or whatever. He's going to get better as a communicator uh, because he wants to be better as a communicator. It's not, it's not just going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we yeah. don't do that with any other area of our life, do we? Mm -hmm. Think about it. With any other area of our life, whether whether it's our health, whether it's our marriage, whether it's all intentional. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all intentional. Which is what being a disciple, or a better word for for the Greek word disciple, is apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what apprenticeship is. You're 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 apprenticing. You know, yeah. if you're apprenticing to become a plumber. How many? How much time are you studying? How much time are you spending under the master? Yeah. How much time are you out working? Yeah. You know, troubleshooting, getting yeah. it wrong, it's trying the practical again. things. It's all the uh, all the practicums that you do, and yeah. and you know, getting your hands dirty. You're and learning doing a it. new language. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're, you're learning new skills. Elbows. But, what's an elbow? Oh, it's this yeah. elbow. No, 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 no. Elbows like this. Right. It's a part of the. Yeah. Exactly. It's, I would. Yeah. I can't yeah. talk sensibly about yeah. plumbing at all. But <laughs> but but any apprenticeship requires yeah. a phenomenal amount of intentionality. 
quality time training. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. And and that's what our discipleship continues. Yeah. Discipleship. And, and again, we're not talking about again. It, we're not relating this to salvation. We're talk. We're really relating this. Do Do you want to grow in your faith? Yeah. And it's got to be intentional. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think are signs? that you're being too influenced by the world. What, what do you, what, you know, can can you start seeing it in people that, like we've already talked like fear mongering, for example, you become sure. a more fearful yeah. kind of person yeah. Yeah. when you're just completely absorbed by yeah. the world. You know, you're worried about war or worried about politics yeah. or worried about whatever. Do you, do you think there are other signs that tend to creep into people's uh, behaviors or characteristics mm-hmm. or life or values or, or what is it, you know, do you, do, you, do you see signs when people get absorbed by the world? Yeah, I think I think a, I think some of it can be uh, traced to to many anxieties in people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a yeah. big one for yeah. a lot of people. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I can speak to it. I've had anxiety in my life too, and 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 at times it tries to creep into my life, and but um, it's a little different type of influence when, with that side of my own anxiety. But uh-huh. uh, but but with other anxieties in people's lives, you can see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, they're just, and a lot of it, a lot of it, when you talk to younger people and you, you would know this too, Pastor John, that a lot of it, some of it is like, is there actually hope for the future? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a bleak out, outlook. Yeah. Yeah. You know, am I ever going to be able to buy, I don't even know. I can't buy a house. Like my parents bought a house. Right. You know, right. it's so out of, out of the, I can't, I can't afford that. I got a hundred thousand dollars of college debt. I got, you know, so there's, there's really sometimes a bleak outlook. Yeah. On yeah. things. Yeah. So when yeah. you're influenced by the world, you become more anxious. Yeah. You know, we talked about you become more stingy. You have a scarcity mindset scarcity. Yeah. over yeah. everything. Like, I've got to get mine. Yeah. And get it quickly and Hold on it. to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you become more anxious, become mm-hmm. more scarce. You become more fearful mm-hmm. of things. I found people tend to be angrier. Angrier. That's a good one. Um, yeah. You know, just just anger with the opposition, more div- divisive or divisive mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. whatever. However, however you they say that. that, yeah. I think. Uh, how do you guys say it in England? Divisive. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I use both. Yeah. Since you started me on I'm that sorry. journey, yeah. <laughs> divisive, and then I said, "Well, it's also divisive here." You sounded very uh, smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah the um, English people just sound smart. Yeah, they actually smart. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, it's so true, uh, Pastor John. You, you know, a lot of lot of that is. Um, uh, you know that anger, anger and stuff. You see it because it's it's all over social media. And here's the thing about social media too. And it's not just it's just not what we say and, and what comes out of our mouth. It's what we're typing typing on on the screen. Yeah. You know that's coming out of your heart already. I mean you you know you and when you're reading this anger or this or you know you only follow a certain side. And and you see something that goes against that certain side, you you just you start to break apart inside, and and mm. and you just get angry about things. And so yeah, you, there's anger, there's anxiety, there's fear. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, even like I language mean, begins. To language change. changes. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. there's so much that goes on. Like, you know, Paul talks about you know, do not be conformed to the to the pattern to the thinking of this world. That's right. But be renewed, transformed. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's. So, so we talk about renewing of yeah. the mind, yeah. but he's like, there's a warning before renewing there of is. the mind. It's like he, there's a do not yeah. um, in there beforehand because it's so easy for us to get absorbed mm-hmm. into patterns of behavior, patterns of yeah. language, uh, patterns of, of value systems that the world yeah. loves. Yeah, and it happens to us all. And and you know, I'm not I'm not without fault in it as well. Um, in my own personal life and you know I can't speak to anybody else's this is a personal journey and and uh, but we all um, have been under the influence and 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 it and it makes you more vulnerable it makes you uh, do stupid things it ma- it makes you um, lower your guard it, it's yeah. just there's so many different things and we're under the influence of of culture yeah 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 it's it's just so easy isn't it i you know a lot of people aren't in a position where they're ready to maybe let go of those friends Mm -hmm. that are influencing them or or family that's taking them down whatever path or that they're antagonistic with and and i think it's very thick and complex for a lot of people Mm -hmm. like it's certainly not as simple as you know just cut all of this out of your life and and you know yeah. just just think about yeah. Christ. It's it's a real step by step process. And 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 Pastor John, that's what I that's why I said on Sunday. I said do do one thing. Yeah, exactly. Don't yeah. don't try to fix all 
all the things that we just talked about today in your uh-huh. life that you're probably under culture, uh-huh. you know, not under God, yeah. you know, um, to, to that degree. And so just start somewhere, mm. you know, start with the pattern of somewhere in your life. If it's giving, start giving, Yeah. start there, you know, be under, be under God's influence in, in that part of your life. Or if it's, if it's, if it's your time, start there. Yeah. Yeah. 10 minutes a day, you know, do start somewhere with it so it can change the trajectory of your life. Um, because you, you won't, you won't do it unless you're intentional about it. Yeah. 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 It reminds me, mm. is it that uh, Navy general, he did that speech where it was make your bed? Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's a great, it's awesome. Yeah. I read the book. It's an oh, incre- okay, incredible yeah, you book. You read the whole book. Yeah. But I just saw the speech, but it's a, oh, yeah. it's essentially the same principle, right? Totally. It's like just just totally. wake up in the morning and do one thing. One thing. Um, make right. your bed. And, yeah. and, 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 and his whole point is once you accomplish that task, it leads to the next it task. It leads to the next and the next and the next and the next, yeah. And and it and it does come to the place where it was like in uh, I think it was Daniel one eight where he said you know I've resolved in my heart I'm not going to eat mm-hmm. uh, food that's been dedicated to pagan idols yeah and and so I think I think so I think for followers of Christ that are listening to this right now it's it's a resolve in your heart like you know what I'm gonna no I'm gonna start here yeah yeah today yeah I'm gonna do that and it's a resolve in your heart to 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 make that decision to push against the very thing that's influenced your life mm-hmm. and for, for years, for decades, for whatever. Um, but culture, you know, our church has a culture, you know, yeah, yeah. churches have cultures. Yeah. Uh, sometimes those cultures need to shift too, right. You know, in church, yeah. you know, to, you know, we used to, there used to be a part of our culture of a church year. This is years ago at central where you don't wear a hat in church. Right, right. You know, it was one of those, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pastor John's got a hat on. It was out. just so oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm not calling them out. This is what I mean. Uh, yeah. you know, and 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 people we we had the usher, we had um he was an usher that we called the uh, hat Nazi. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. The hat police. The hat police, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and man, he was just, I mean, so if you saw just, someone with a hat, he was, he was so angry for them about and, it. Yeah, right. it's just like d- dude, we, we can't do that. Right. You know, it used to be a thing decades ago in church, at least in American culture. Um, and I was like, we can't do that anymore. Mm. You know, they're coming in. They don't know any different right, to right. wear a hat or not wear a hat in church. Right. Like, it's not it's not dishonoring God by doing right, that. Right. Let, let's, let's, you know, this is a building. We're the church. Let's treat people how we want to be treated. Yeah, because yeah. that's what happens when two values come into conflict. That's right. You know, people yeah. have the value of, well, this is God's space and we should yeah. honor it. And that's yeah. a true, fair enough value. Absolutely. Like we don't, yeah. but, but perhaps there's a greater value yeah. of I'll be all things it's to actually, all men by all means people. and I might win some yeah. for Christ. Like, uh, like people. Yeah, the yeah. value of kindness <laughs> yeah. and acceptance trumps yeah. this cultural way, cultural way of, of honoring God. Of honoring God, yeah. Um, not necessarily a scriptural way of honoring God. That's right. Um, yeah, and that's what I mean by that. There's yeah, a certain culture it's, it's, in the church. Yeah, and that yeah. was just an example, you know. Just no, a, totally. A I mean, yeah. we, we get so locked into our cultural values mm-hmm. that we can sometimes forget to go back. Does this align with, with a scriptural value or, or kingdom values? Well, we've done that with our own church, right? We've been in we've been in staff meetings and just meetings and talking about, do, is this, you know, it's part of our values, but do we re- actually value that? Right, yeah, yeah. Do, you know, and just have, yeah. you know, straightforward conversations about, do we actually do this or not? Or is it something we want to aspire, aspire to, but it's really not a value yet? Or what, what is it? What is that? You know? And, and so I think, I think it's always good to go back and check your own heart, like your own, your own walk with God and say, you know what, am I under God in this area of my life or am am I under the influence of culture? Right. Right. One of the dangers about influence as well is people, people under the delusion that they're not really being that influenced. Yeah, or, or the things that they're watching, or the things they're seeing, or which whatever are, they're consuming. Which again, it goes back to being intoxicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Under the yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. You, it's hard to sometimes see the progression mm. of your own thought mm-hmm. um, and getting back to that place, and 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 you know that's why prayer, life, meditation, journaling, yeah. allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us of our yeah. own mindsets and yeah. and things that we we don't see strongholds mm-hmm. we don't see in that's our right. own lives. Yeah. Um, as as you know, sometimes not the most helpful way of viewing things. But and that's really hard to change 
It is so difficult. It is. And the older you get, mm-hmm. I think the harder it is because No question. Because you've because people have lived a certain way with a certain value for yeah. so long. Yeah. It's very hard to undo that all of a mm-hmm. sudden and go, actually, I've been doing this for thirty years, but maybe there's a better way to think about this or to yeah. do that. That that's a it's a that's massive just a shift big pill for yeah. people to, mm-hmm. for a lot of people to swallow. It is. It is. I, and I think and I think I I do believe though, as we as we draw near to God and in our relationship with him, I do believe that even though we've lived a certain way for a certain amount of years, that the more you draw closer to him, the more you see that how you've been doing that or how you've been living a certain way or whatever it is, watching a certain thing, uh, speaking about things that, you know, that God hasn't called us to speak to, but to, you know, I think, I think, I think the more you draw closer to him, he helps you with that, yeah. that shift. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and again, it goes back to the scripture you said, it's just a part of that's the renewing of our mind. Mm. You know, we want the removal of our mind, which would be awesome. <laughs> you know, just put God's mind. In mind. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pop, done. You know, it's done. <laughs> no, it's, it's the process of the renewing of our mind. And I think that's, that's what we're, we're getting at with a little bit with this uh, under the influence of culture or God is, um, you know, and even if it is just starting with our time, and um, I think it just, I think it just helps us start to see the world differently. I, I tell you what, I, I can, I can speak to this personally. Like if I'm not, if I'm not doing devotion, if I'm not spending the right time, I'm, mm, yeah, yeah. I can be not a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just being honest. Right, I mean, right. and, and it's, and again, it goes back to what what am I under the influence of, mm. and 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 so it's a daily, it's a daily thing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, and and um, and all the devotions. Absolutely, people need to do more of that and read scripture. And, yeah. and I've also found yeah. it's it's also, I mean, setting aside very intentional time with God is mm-hmm. great, but then there's the ongoing practice of just just recognizing God's presence in in your daily life. Yeah, and and all the practical things you're doing as well. Yeah, so. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. We, I, my neighbors, I was off yesterday and, uh, um, and my neighbor, um, uh, it's not my neighbor. He's, he was, he was, uh, he's the grandfather of my neighbor or his dad, it's his dad, but their grandson, you know, it's his grandson that he takes care of over there. And so, so they came across and I was working on the bike and stuff and, and, uh, and they came in and say, Hey, can, can we come in and look at the, motorcycles I said sure come on in we started talking chatting it up and and uh and uh the, the little guy he was like you know he's like seven or eight years old he's you know he's just infatuated with these motorcycles you know and and Garrett Garrett was there with me my, my oldest son and he said he said hey you want to sit on a real bike you know um my son has a, a Suzuki Jixer 750, so he set him on there. You got to see the, and he started it up for him, and then he let him rev it. He got to see the look on this kid's face. You know, <laughs> it, it made the kid's day. But all of that you embrace in that moment, and I look at those as God moments. Yeah, absolutely, it gives you the opportunity to reach your neighbors, yeah. to be kind. Did I have time for that? No, because I I really had stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm behind at the house, got to do stuff around the house, but, yeah. but taking that time and understanding that now people are more important than your, than your, than the stuff you got to do, Larry, right, right. you know, and, and take that time with, with people like that. And, and in some way in moments like that, be able to minister to them and give value to their, yeah. to their life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's looking for those opportune, yeah. opportune moments. Yeah. Um, because God's always doing stuff in your mm-hmm. workplace or, mm-hmm. you know, even when you're having a meal with the family, yeah. just to be present mm-hmm. and enjoy that and see that as a gift from yeah. God and yeah. you hear another day and, yeah. you know, all of those uh, all of those things that we can be influenced by on, on the outside, it's mm-hmm. just recognizing that God is in the moments right mm-hmm. here with us. That's right. Um, yeah, it's, that's, that's really powerful. Um, yeah, I, I, I like, I like this from, from Bonhoeffer. He says the ultimate test of a moral society is the kind of world, um, it leaves to its children. Um, and, and to me, that's one of the key differences I think between worldly culture and Christian culture is worldly culture tends to focus on the me, myself and I, 
mm-hmm. um, what's good for the here and what's good for the now. Um, and to be fair, to be fair too, Christianity sometimes lends its or music lends itself that way. And yeah. and again, you are working on yourself. Like I, so there's a fine. I feel like there's a fine line, right? Yeah. John? Like yeah, but but again, that I think the key distinction is in in the world you're working on yourself for yourself. Mm-hmm. In Christianity, you're working on yourself again to be a blessing. To be a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. To mm-hmm. to to be able to leave um, more of heaven on earth than, mm-hmm. than when you were there, mm. uh, before you were there. That's you right. Know? And, yeah. and so it's just a very different spirit that animates the self-improvement mm. process. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we want people to improve. We want them to be Absolutely, renewed, yeah. But, 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 yeah. but we want people to be animated by a different spirit that, that mm-hmm. motivates people to mm-hmm. do that. And I think that's that, for me, is one of the, the central reasons why being influenced by Christ is so compelling and yeah. so moving. That's what I love about some athletes that are just, you know, they've they're they've worked on their craft and they're so great at it mm-hmm. and and then but they use the platform to yeah. express yeah. you know, we've talked about Scotty Scheffler in the past, a golfer and yeah. you know, there's other there's other there's football players, basketball players, all all these different hockey players, all these other guys that that use their platform to, you know, to to share the gospel, yeah, yeah. To share the good news, to s- that God, you know, and, and not just in a cliche way, you know, right. um, but but something that you know that's transformed their life. Yeah, yeah, and not just share the gospel. Like, there's so many great, you know, Christian athletes that are involved in setting up, you know, uh, uh, organizations, uh, organizations, yeah. and after school projects, and getting kids off street yes. and playing sports yes. or, or whatever it is that they're involved with. Like yeah. that's that's what I mean by whole mature people yeah. that aren't just thinking about how do I get that next big paycheck that's from this right. win. Yeah, but but how can I take some of this excess and yeah. and begin to. Uh, help people help with people it. With yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That, that's ultimately the goal, isn't it? Yeah. To be influenced by Christ in such a way that you can begin to influence others yeah. in that same way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's John Maxwell's definition of leadership, isn't it? Leadership is influence. Influence, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we're all being influenced, and we're all influencing in in some capacity. Yeah. And I think, and I think, at the end of the day, and we'll we'll end with this. Uh, you know, in Hebrews two one, it talks about uh, just. Adhere to the truth. Listen to what what what's being said to the when the, when it says the truth, God's word, and then and then be careful not to drift away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so easy. Yeah, that's why you say it's influence. a daily yeah. thing because you gotta yeah. just yeah. It's the tide so, will take you out. It'll take you out. Yeah. It'll you're you you know you you won't anchor to it and you're you know you you fall asleep and you and you drift away and you and you wake up and you're like holy smokes I'm so far away from where I need to be. Oh yeah. And yeah. and uh and 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 that day is a day where you where it's a do over for sure because yeah, you yeah. got to get back to that. But yeah. but it's but yeah just if we could take anything from that weekend and and this podcast is you know our prayer is is that we all and listen Pastor John could say this, I can say this. We've all been influenced, and we're and we're under the influence. And culture is very real; it's very strong, and and it is sometimes the antithesis, sometimes the antithesis of of God's word and and how He wants us to live out our life. And uh, I want everyone to be encouraged by the fact that Pastor John struggles, I struggle, we all struggle mm-hmm. together. But at the end of the day. Um, our hearts are we want to be under the influence of God yeah, and absolutely. make great impact in the world mm-hmm. and bring heaven to earth to it. Yeah. You know, and uh, so l- let's be careful, uh, you know, let's be careful not to drift away from the truth yeah. and, uh, and be influenced. And, and it's, and it's easy guys, take a step back, you know, this week, when you listen to this, take a step back and look at your life and say, you know what, pull back the curtain over your heart and say, you know what, am I under the influence of God in this part of my life or am I under the influence of the world's culture? So, very good. Yeah, you're, you're going to become like whatever you consume. That's right. That's right. Great way to say it. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, it's a good podcast. Um, that's awesome. Well, um, if you're watching, if you're listening, uh, you can leave a review. Whether you're watching on Spotify or Apple or whatever other platform, if you're on YouTube, please click that like and subscribe. It really helps us to get this out there. But thank you so much for spending some time and tuning in and, and being with us and, and giving God just a moment to maybe speak into your life. We hope that this in some way enriched your life.